All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the one tragicomic aspect, but at least there's like some rueful chuckles, I guess, to have. You might be shaking your head while you're chuckling because it's all about Biden being a goddamn moron, but uh, the one silver lining to the collapse of Afghanistan in record time is the result of Biden's bungling uh, is really the Taliban and foreign legacy media trolling him. And by the way, there are cogent points being made, uh, and, and I'm not praising the Taliban because they're theocratic and authoritarian, and that's everything that I hate. Uh, nor foreign legacy media, because uh, of course YouTube YouTube props up Al Jazeera, the uh, corpse that is legacy media. Groups like YouTube actually love them. By the way, pinned comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. Keep in mind I use four better video hosting sites and make two exclusive videos a day on them. Uh, so you're only getting half a clank if you're uh, getting the dumbed down YouTube uh, commentary. Anyway, link in the description. And there's a separate story too. The other day, Mujahid, who's the spokesperson for the Taliban, gave a press conference. And it was funny because Joe Biden and, and the legacy tech networks in the West, speaking of YouTube and others, uh, were trolled uh, masterfully. The, the Taliban has gotten into shitposting, I suppose, because uh, they pointed out, yeah, uh, Mujahid was asked about uh, women's rights and, and all this other shit, but also free expression. When that came up, he said, well, you should be asking Facebook about that. All these U.S. firms and groups they say gung-ho for free speech, but you know they're censoring people all the time. I would note, the Taliban has an active Twitter handle right now. Trump, meanwhile, is considered too dangerous, by the way, to speak on the platform. The double standard is becoming kind of evident now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Taliban, a brutal theocratic dictatorship, essentially, or oligarch, you could call it, uh, that explicitly condemns things like women's rights, throws gay people off buildings and stuff. Uh, they're allowed, uh, as long as... Uh, Twitter apparently coming out and saying, well, as long as they don't get too violent, it's okay. Meanwhile, Donald Trump says, go home with peace in your hearts. He's not there. But ridiculing legacy tech in the West, uh, it is a cogent point because the United States has lost its mandate to complain about other countries respecting human rights because our own government doesn't do that anymore. We should. All we have to do is go back to the old style civic model in which we're gung ho for free speech and, and worship the Constitution. That, that form of civic worshipfulness of human rights goes a long way towards preventing a lot of fucking problems. But we've abandoned that. In the wake of the Cold War, the government said, well, we got to crack down on disinfo. We got to crack down on propaganda while well, spewing it out 24 7. Uh, we've got to prevent people from having <clears throat> wrong think political opinions. It's Again, it's funny. They're partnering with legacy tech firms to try to prevent people in the United States and in the West from speaking their mind politically to the point where if somebody does and they have the wrong opinion, their bank cancels them and the woke mob comes to try to, to get them kicked out of their job and shit like that. Meanwhile, the Taliban's on Twitter. Then, link in the description. The legacy uh, media, uh, Al Jazeera, uh, foreign legacy media, of course, uh, was talking about Mujahid's address. And they said, well, I mean, there is a big difference here because Biden didn't take any questions after his press conference, but, you know, the Taliban did. Again, that's true. When Joe Biden gave his teleprompted, very carefully scripted speech, uh, it wasn't really an address because it was just, you know, bullshit talking points and straw man arguments which is why he's down oh, over 10 points, potentially, uh, in polling. We'll wait until the next round of it. So far, all we've got is Rasmussen, and, and that tends to deviate some from the aggregate. Um, <laughs> Joe Biden gives his presser, a press conference supposedly, turns around as a 180 and practically jogs out of the room. He didn't want to take questions. So then Al Jazeera's like, well, uh, that's showing. Taliban took questions. Yeah, and then it gave them an opportunity to rake Biden, by the way, over the coals and rake the Western world over the coals. The, the lack of response for the first 24 hours uh, in this, this fiasco gave everyone except the Biden administration the ability to put out uh, uh, talking points. Again, this might have been Biden's decision. When he goes into damage control mode, this is something that was talked about when he was candidate Biden. He's like a McClellan. He sits there and, and second guesses himself and wants to hear from every advisor and shit and, and keeps changing his mind while other people attempt to hammer things out. He's not a doer, he's a thinker. Uh, he's not very strategic in the way that he handles himself because he's, he's I, I don't know, afraid of saying the wrong thing, which happens every time anyway. 
uh, Biden's speech told the Democratic partisans everything they wanted to hear. Well, we had to leave Afghanistan. By the way, I take responsibility, but really it's the Afghan people's fault. We've seen 48 hours of the U.S. legacy media and groups blaming the Afghan people, essentially, or their military that we fucking trained for the fiasco. Blaming everyone but Joe Biden. Thankfully, there are a few people piercing that echo chamber. Even the legacy media is criticizing him. For the first time in his presidency, he didn't get asked anything about his favorite ice cream. I expect the next time that there's an actual press conference, they're going to say, well, what kind of ice cream does the Taliban like? I hope that uh, that dude uh, from Fox News, the only one that even half-asses asking Biden tough questions, Peter Ducey, I hope that's what he asks. What's, uh, what's uh, Mujahid's favorite flavor of ice cream, Mr. Biden? I'm sure that you know because you're so interested in that shit. It's all you are interested in. The silver lining is that we're going to have a never-ending spiel of the Taliban ridiculing the Biden administration and, and the way U.S. is working. For instance, I'm patriotic. I like the United States. I hope for the best for my country. But it's not getting the best right now. When it's not getting its best, you have to ridicule. You have to satirize. You have to point out what the problem is. It's hard to solve problems when you can't identify what they are. And so when I look at the landscape of the United States with all the id poll, with all the propaganda, with the abandonment of the concept of free expression, of privacy, of states' rights, when I see the Biden administration being openly hostile to these things, when I see Joe Biden arguing that Americans shouldn't have more than 10 bullets in a magazine in their goddamn Glock, but he leaves behind billions in weaponry for the Taliban, when the Taliban is confiscating weapons door-to-door -door using the same exact linguistic excuses that the Biden admin uses with regards to people. Well, man, you don't need all these guns. Uh, the, the military will keep you safe. Kind of telling now, isn't it? Of course it is. And they're being trolled expertly. <clears throat> That's because Biden doesn't know what he's doing. Biden literally doesn't know because he's not in charge. Biden gets the blame as the steward president, as the figurehead of the United States. Other people, his cronies, uh, a handful of woke generals that don't know what they're doing apparently either, uh, top brass, bureaucrats, lifelong political wonks, these are the people that are running the United States right now. Well, the problem is you can't have that kind of structure at the executive level and have good things happen. This is, this is why people from the legislature, by and large, shouldn't seek executive office. This is why you should go generally with a governor or somebody who's been in private corporate business like Trump, because they, they know executive things. Legislative individuals, people who have been almost solely in the legislature, like Joe Biden, he was a senator for several decades, they just don't know how to do anything without a bunch of other people around them uh, discussing things, like a goddamn uh, Socratic dialogue or something like that. Well, that's not the way that you govern in the executive sense. There's a reason why you have that system in the United States, where you have the executive power and you have the legislative power and they counterbalance one another. Biden's inept. He's a lol cow. He's a laughingstock. And the one silver lining to this whole fiasco is that the Taliban is showing that to the entire world. And foreign legacy media. And a little bit the U.S. legacy media. Though not so much. That's about all. Peace out.